Hey, welcome to another episode of the Juana Words Podcast. All right, so a couple of episodes, I mentioned that I had talked to a teacher of ours. Well, hold on. First of all, let me introduce you. This is, you want to introduce yourself, your name, your last name, your social security? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My name is Tirso Ponce. Yeah. My name is Tirso Ponce. Uh-huh. I am from Houston, Texas, and... Okay, so what do we have in common? We are former students of uh, AMA. How, how, no, we're friends. Of course we're friends. Yeah, well, you got to tell people we're friends, not like we just met each other. Okay. <laughs> so okay. we're friends. We're, we're old, old, I guess, homies. Like yeah, we're Friends, homies. friends, where we, like, we hung out with like our friends. I was telling somebody, I was telling my son, actually, that the first time I had ever gone to the Memorial Park was with you. Really? Yeah. I'm um, like Allen Allen Parkway or whatever. Like I never knew that shit existed. I mean, oh, that. that's I never right. knew that stuff existed. I did take you there. Yeah, yeah, with a couple of friends. So that's some right. of my friends and some of your friends and we kind of like, that's just the relationship we had. We kind of hung out at school and then we hung out outside of school. We are friends. <laughs> we were homies from the past. We hung out at school and then after school. Yeah. You know, we had so we did. We friends. did. We hung out with a couple of friends on your end and my end and we were friends, and so your name was brought up when I was talking to Jay Sharon. So I did, like, an interview with him uh, just recently, which ha- aired a couple of episodes ago. But we were having the conversation, and he brought you up. Actually, he brought you up a couple of times, because I think he's, like, really fucking proud of you. I, I think he's I gave really... that poor man a hard time, but he was one yeah. of the, he, he had a major influence in my life. You know? Did he? Yeah, absolutely. Why? How do you, how do you, what, explain? Because he, he didn't put up with my shit. What do you mean? Because I was in school, I was... I, I always was bucking the system. Cause what do you I, mean by bucking the system? I just, I don't, I never. Are you using terminology that people maybe don't know? So what is bucking the I system I misbehaved mean? in school a lot because uh-huh. uh, I like the attention from girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I misbehaved You like the attention. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? I was a basically. kid. Yeah, I was, that was a kid, you know, and I like girls and. Girls liked you? I, th- I hope they did. <laughs> I, I hope they did. <laughs> Anyways, um. <laughs> So you gave him a hard time. So I gave, well, no, 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 no. He, I, I gave a lot of people a hard time, mm-hmm, but Jay just was, Jay just didn't put up with my shit. And he always had a way to communicate with me to, to not, so I wouldn't well, disrupt what do you, what do you his mean class. He, what do you mean he didn't put up with you? Like, what do you mean? He wouldn't like, because I would misbehave in class. Uh-huh. Like I wasn't, I wasn't. He didn't put you in your place or like send you off to the office. He no, no, no. Like, he wasn't like that. He uh-huh. was, he just knew how to talk to me to be like, dude, you're, you don't need to act like that. Mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't say those words either. He didn't embarrass me because once you embarrass me, uh-huh. that's uh-huh. it. Like, I'm, you flew off the hinges. That's, that's, yeah, you're, you're fucked up. I'm going to go out of my way to make your life hell. <laughs> But no, he was, he, he knew how to talk to me. Yeah. You know, like, hey, dude, come on, man. Like, and I respected him that I, he didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, I just go into his class and I never really did my work. And he always was like, dude, you're so smart. Like, why are you not doing your work? Like, why are you not doing these things? <laughs> but I did learn a lot from him. Mm-hmm. I learned like he, a lot of things he would say, I like, I would buck and I would always, it wouldn't, it would register, uh-huh. but I would always have to like go back and think about things that he would say but yeah. he because he was he was teaching us the curriculum yeah but he was also side teaching us oh like basic uh interactions and basic like not like just everyday a, things just about things that are perceptions of oh, the like world life. like about life about okay. religion about he would throw in his little dabs here and there yeah. he couldn't come out and do it because you know i guess it was against you know policy of the ama and yeah. don't teach out of the curriculum yeah but I would pick up on that shit. So we're assuming at this point. But he was. He was very astute. He was very an intellectual person. And every time he was, like, for example, I think one of the ideas he gave or one of the in- examples he gave, he said that he put up two pieces of paper on the wall. And one of them said red, but it was it was in blue. And another piece of paper said blue, but it was in red. And the, the, the students would come in and be like, what are you trying to say with that? What you? And he's like, I don't know. What are you reading? Uh. He goes, all, I, all it is is ink and paper. What are you reading? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I do remember him like that. Actually, a lot of like the printouts and like the handouts that he would give. And there was a couple of poems and there was a couple of things that like yes. were direct and indirect. Yes. I kept a lot of that shit. I, I still I, I have, have it. I have his letter here. You have his stuff too? I have his letter, his last what letter. letter. When he gave me a passing grade to graduate, oh. if I, if it wasn't for Jay <laughs> giving me that D minus, uh-huh. I would have never graduated because uh-huh. I just didn't. I already knew everything that he was teaching as far mm-hmm. as the curriculum goes because he was an English teacher. Yeah. And I was so into all like my yeah. favorite part of English. Yeah. was always the, the Shakespeare yeah. stuff. But after that, I was like, man, I'm tuning out because this is like, I don't this like, why do I need to learn this? <laughs> and so he was always kind of fucking with me about my work. Uh-huh. 
and uh, it was my journal entries. Oh, I didn't. I hadn't turned in my journal entries. Dang, and, you remember? Yeah, and so I, I, in one, in two days, I wrote like four months worth of journal entries, and I just poured <laughs> my mind out on paper. And he knew that I. He knew. He's like, I think. I think. I think that's what it was. Yeah. And if I remember, and that it was something else. Maybe it was something else. I think mm-hmm. it was another assignment. But I. But I think that's what it was. And he's like, dude, like. It's so easy. I'm gonna do this just to get you the fuck out of here. <laughs> Pretty much. That's exactly what he told me. I'm going to pass you because you just need to get the fuck on. And really and truly, I think subconsciously, mm-hmm. I was just afraid of moving on. Yeah. You know. I just I was I was supposed to have graduated two years prior. One of the things that I talked about, and I talked about, and I shared this before, was that I actually dropped out of fucking high school. Um, I dropped out of high school, and I ended up pregnant with my kid now, right? And I just didn't care. I didn't care to fucking go back. I didn't care. I didn't care. I didn't care. I, didn't, I just didn't care, right? I had a kid, and all I needed to do was feed the kid, make sure he turned 18, and on with my life. <laughs> honestly, honestly, that's that's the mentality that I had. And so, I, I don't know if you remember the him, but Mr. Bean. Yeah, so he, had, he, had, he had another big influence in my, in my youth. He called me. He's like, Angelica, you got like fucking three credits to graduate. You're not going to do this? And I was like, oh, that's dope. do I do I got a choice? He was like, you're going to turn 21. I was like, but I'm pregnant. He was like, yeah, we got a lady who helps uh, teen mothers or teen whatever to like the pregnancy with related girls or whatever, whatever. And I was like... <clears throat> yeah perfect why not and they're like well you got to come to school the first couple of weeks and then we'll go ahead and send you back out and then whatever and i remember like i it was tough like i was like legit like seven months pregnant and like walking from the bus stop to the school and i was like i fucking hate this shit like i don't want to do this shit (laughs) oh and i remember one day i even got back and i was like i was gonna pass out mind you i had a big old belly like it wasn't it wasn't fucking easy and then i had a really hard time with like other personal shit right and so sure enough they like gave me this lady who like came to me all the time gave gave me my assignments and then sharon jay sharon i had him for my last english class and but when i talked to him recently he was telling me he was like Angelica, he was i remember your writing he was you're really smart and i was like really because i remember being dyslexic like i don't remember he's like no you came across in your writing he's like you were really good and i was like why are you lying? Like, why are you, t- why are you trying to make, even still as an adult, you're still trying to make me feel good. You're still trying to, like, amp me up. You're, like, you're never going to stop being the teacher. It sounds like I'm never going to stop being the student for you. And, like, I've always, like, carried that with me. And so when I talked to him, I reached out to him. I was like, Jay, I don't think you understand, like, the prefaces that you had in my life. Yeah. Like, I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand what, first of all, what being did. And then for you to, like, for me to remember you in that manner, in that way, and for me to keep pushing and pushing that it was no longer a goal to like raise a kid and get him out of my house, but raise a decent kid, mm-hmm. raise a good, uh, a good civil, like the, a little citizen, you know, do better, be good, like know where you come from, know the neighborhoods you come from, like yeah. talk about those things. I talked to him and I talked to him and my husband about the like the life that. W- you lived a very similar life to me. The kind of stupid things that we would do. <laughs> right? <laughs> Deep breath and shit. <laughs> I did a lot of stupid shit. A, bit, a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. You, you would never have thought, like, if you know me now, you would never have thought that I got guns put out on me. I got, <laughs> I had, uh, uh, <sighs> Like some really wild shit that I don't want to like get into because it's it's yeah it's good deep it's personal I get it gets it. really deep it gets really deep you yeah, know what I mean I get you I believe me I know you know what I mean and so I I try to explain this to them and and they're like that sounds like a movie I'm like no it's not a fucking my wish like that shit hurt like that shit like you still think about it and you're like damn man like had that person fucking had that person like really had gone above and beyond and not just scared me with the gun. And like really like wanted to harm me like I I had well my choices I had put myself in positions that I should have never been in um, and then I was being put in positions that nobody should never put it put like put me in but I was still there and I was still doing it and so when I was talking to Jay and he brought you up he's like you should you, you got to talk to him like like he's just done some things <laughs> he's done some things and he's come 
like on the other side of things. So, thank you, Jay. <laughs> so, without going into too much detail, how did you start out there? How did you end up there? At Ama? Yeah. I know it's a route. I know it's a large question, a huge <clears throat> question. A lot of us ended up there for a reason. It was an at-risk youth high school. I ended up at Ama because actually I, I went to I went to Ama three times. I went in '94, and I went in nine. <clears throat> nine five. I went in the spring of ninety four. I went in the fall of ninety five and the entire year of ninety seven, ninety eight. Um, you know, spring, uh, fall of ninety seven, spring ninety eight. Uh-huh. Alma was the only school that took a chance on me. I wasn't allowed to go back to HISD. Did no. you got kicked out? Yeah, I went to. I, I expelled or kicked out or. I, I'm not sure. Okay, like, did so, he want to see uh, your face? My, so I, my home school was Sterling, mm-hmm. but I never. I, I, I lasted there a couple months. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I tried to go to Milby too, but that was just as bad. Yeah, you know, because I had a lot of friends that went to Milby too, and we, I, ne- I never went to one class. Yeah, and I was there at Milby for like two months and didn't go to one class. Well, my home school was Wheatley. Oh, and Fifth Warders. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, it, it was too easy to be bad yeah, in a big it was. environment like it was. that. It was. It was. And so um, <clears throat> I was. Uh, I was. A, I was a rebel, man. I was just. Uh, and and and. Just like you, uh, you know, I did a lot of bad, not, I won't say bad, I did a lot of, yeah, I did bad shit, but I didn't, I, I, I was raised right, you know, yeah, but yeah. it was just being mischievous, come, I was really good at being bad, mm-hmm. and, um, that's a hard thing to, accept, I just, yeah, it, that it's, you knew how to do it, I, I'm trying, I'm trying not to say it with, like, with pride, yeah, because I am ashamed of that shit, because my parents yeah. raised me right, you yeah. know, I come from a good background, my father and my mother loved me, you know, and they, you know, they cultured me well, yeah, and they they like always they taught me to you know educate your mind and mm-hmm. respect other people and you know yeah. i was raised i had a great childhood my 80s was the shit mm-hmm. it was in junior high that something the inner beast woke up or something i don't know i just started i was already a, a travieso as a kid real yeah, bad like mm-hmm. but i wasn't travesuras yeah i wasn't really doing bad shit until i was in junior high and mm-hmm. it was so bad that my my parents had to uh, they they try to get rid of me. They try to put me in a home because uh, it got bad, you know. Because I was my, my, uh, okay. So my, I'm, I'm adopted, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and my parents were already at that age that they just were like, oh my god, this dude is bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we had they tried to send me to this place in in Waco called uh, Methodist Home, like a military school. It was a it's it's, it's a like a boarding home. Oh, like a boarding school. It's a it's a boarding school uh-huh. slash reform school slash foster care it was run by a bunch of christians methodist Mm -hmm. religious people or something Mm -hmm. like that and some nun recommended to my mother like hey man if you got to do something because you can't just you know this kid my parents had divorced yeah and my father was uh not coming around as much i think that had a big Mm -hmm. influence yeah like i started seeking out other father figures Males, yeah. i think subconsciously i was doing that shit because mm-hmm. uh, i knew if my dad was around and to kick my ass like i wouldn't have gotten into a lot of the shit that i got into yeah. but he was struggling with his own personal shit mm-hmm. and uh, uh i went they they took me to waco and they're like oh no this dude he, he, I, I just wasn't i never i just like no you know i'm gonna just fucking just drop me off somewhere where i don't even know where the fuck i'm at like uh-huh. i was bad there too so i was like fuck that you're gonna f- i'm gonna be bad so i won't be accepted here that's i, I was smart enough to know like i What'd know that do? if i'm bad here mm-hmm. uh, they're gonna force me to go back home mm-hmm. i was smart enough to know that so my they did that worked and my parents came and got me <laughs> to like god damn what's wrong with you why are you so bad and they put me in this place called memorial hall and I was there during the week, but I was coming home on the weekends. Mm-hmm. So in other words, and it was a, it was predominantly white kids. Oh. And a lot of the white kids there were sponsored by, you know, either a judge or some okay. kind of local leader to be there. Uh-huh. So it was a boarding school, also a reform school, uh-huh. you know, it was run by a Christian group uh-huh. also. And, but it was closer to home. It was in Conroe mm-hmm. and I was there for like three, four years, but I was always coming home on the weekends. So mm-hmm. I was coming home on the weekends. And being ghetto, being, bad. being in the hood with my homies, <laughs> and then having to go to my white environment during the week, you know. So my, I was always switching off these personalities. But it was the best, one of the best experiences in my life because that's where I learned a lot about like Early. Led Zeppelin and, oh, yeah, and yeah, shit yeah. like that, yeah, right? Yeah. But then 
when I was over here at home, I was, you know, it's all about run DMC and the ghetto boys and shit like that. So that's how I grew up, like on in this white environment and this yeah. this hood environment. Yeah. Even though I'm not we're not poor or nothing. We were uh-huh. just that's the way things were back in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. You know, your neighborhood was your neighborhood and you know there's yeah. a lot of Latin, a lot of black in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And mine's a Catholic neighborhood, so there was some Irish and some Italians there. But, you know, we were all bad. We were just hanging out the streets and just being bad. And so, like, I would hang out in the streets and be bad with them on the weekends. And then... <laughs> be bad I'd, over there. And then I'd go to <laughs> go <over> there. <laughs> during, but, no, I wasn't that bad at that place because okay. I liked it there. I okay. liked it at that, that spot in Memorial uh-huh. Hall. And I just... I made my friends there. And it was cool, you know, because I was learning white people stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> well, that's the first time I ate like chicken fried steak uh, and okay, okay. shit like that. And, All right. Like I said, like I, their culture. I, like I would have never learned about you know uh, James Taylor. I'm a big James Taylor fan. Okay. And if it wasn't for me going and living there at Memorial Hall at that you place, uh-huh. I would never learned about James Taylor. Yeah. And I'm a big James Taylor fan. Okay. He's a big old folk hippie dude, you mm-hmm. know. But he's got some of the best songs, and I love that shit. And like, and I, I've never, I wouldn't learn, I would not learn about those things. Well, anyways, they, I ended up being real bad that last year that I was there, and they're like, you know what, man, we just can't put up with your shit. You just need to, you're expelled. You can't be here no more. So my mom tried to put me into Mount Carmel because I used to go there when I was in elementary. Mount Carmel, that sounds familiar. Mount Carmel was a Catholic school. Yeah. And so my mom tried to put me back there. That's where I got kicked out in the first place in fourth grade. Oh. Uh, they're like, dude, you cannot come back here. Anyway, so after being rejected at so many places, and then I went back to Mount Carmel after Memorial Hall. I was bad there too. I tried to stab this. These white boys tried to jump me, and I tried to stab them because I was a little bitty dude. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna get my ass kicked by these football players, so I pulled out a knife on these dudes. Oh, and so they and they went and snitched on me, and I got kicked out of Mount Carmel. Uh-huh. <laughs> so nobody else knew what to do with me. Uh-huh. They tried to put me in HISD. I bucked the system. HISD didn't want me back no more, and so my mom found Ima. That's how you ended up there. That's how I ended up in Ama. After all that shit, I ended there in Ama. And so how did how was it there your first time? Because you said you've been you were there <laughs> three different times. The four. first time that I was there was an awakening because uh-huh. it was a lot of people just like me. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, and I related to that. And the teachers there gave a shit. They didn't mm-hmm. give a fuck how bad I was. Yeah. They're like, you know, fuck your bullshit. They're pretty much like, stop acting up and you, learn just something. Just like the rest of these. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Like, you're nothing special, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, just sit your ass down and behave, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically. And so that's, yeah, they, they just pretty much like, they pretty much put like, you stop stop embarrassing your people, man. You know, you're, uh, you're raised better than that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Stop doing that shit. You know, just learn something, goddammit, mm-hmm. you know. And just, and yeah, I, I, they had a different approach there at Ama. But then it was so easy to be bad there, too, mm-hmm. because they were still trying to figure it out, the balance on how to educate. And at the same time, they were they were new to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've already been doing it for what, about 10, 15, 20 years, something like yeah, that. Yeah. But like it was it was more but the times were changing. They and were. The youth yeah. was changing. Yeah. You know, and that gang shit in, in the 90s was yep. tough here in Houston. Yep. It's not like L.A. or Chicago. Yeah. But motherfuckers are out there still being doing stupid shit. You know? No, like, no, definitely not. It, 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 wasn't, bad, it like, wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't bad like Chicago and L.A. and even New York. But it was it, like the transitions and transformations that were happening there were like taking place here and we were yeah. feeling the rocky parts of it and so we were here we are being raised as a teenagers who majority of like these gangs are, are provided by teenagers i've never been in a gang but tell me why do i know the gang signs of my neighborhood because that was your environment. Because I had to know them. Yeah, you had to. Just you sort had of, to. Sort of, sort of a survival thing, right? I, you had to. I never entered a gang. I, but I know the gang signs of my neighborhood. <laughs> That's some fucked up shit. It, it, it was the, the signs. Of, it was the, the times, you know? Yeah. Uh, the culture was changing. Yeah. It was, uh, it, w- it, was, it was more exposure to that gang culture yeah. from L.A. Yeah. being brought into at that time. I mean, it was, it was, there was always... An essence of that here, mm-hmm. you know, with the Smurfs back in the 80s mm-hmm. and Five Dot Posse and shit that I remember, like 8-Ball Posse, the Texas Lowriders. And these are things yeah. that I remember as a child, but I wasn't into mm-hmm. that shit, you know. Mm-hmm. I was always like, fuck gangs. You know, I was a hip-hop kid. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I played around with that shit before I got into the street shit. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I, it just was the, uh, uh, it was, it was the times. Yeah, it was. And, and I'm a was trying to balance that out. How yeah. to educate you and at the same time save you from doing stupid shit. Save you from yourself. Yeah, and, and what they did is they they just threw a bunch of kids from different fucking neighborhoods all in one fucking spot yeah. and we didn't know how to fucking act. <laughs> 
and you know but with us there was that mutual respect. like we didn't like each other but there was some um, there was a mutual respect there. like you stay we stay yeah well, we gotta co-live we got you trying to get out i'm trying to get the fuck out of here yeah there was we, like yeah. yeah you leave me the fuck alone i'll leave you the fuck alone yeah. like you, that's i'm gonna just did a good job of trying to control that chaos a majority of it was that a majority of it was was like all right they they're here to learn and they want to learn but they can't they can't, like it was and i remember that and me and jay had that conversation too about like like the things that were actually happening like the the schools and and some people just i guess you know trying to get over it or didn't get over it but they just they brought a lot of the things that were happening on the streets down to the school and that was trying that was looked down upon you were like come on man like we we're all out here trying to get the fuck out of here man like just we can't keep doing this but so you ended up there that first year and then how did you just keep coming back and decide you know what i need this diploma it was embarrassment and shame to be honest with you, it was embarrassing and shame. Embarrassed? What do you mean? I was embarrassed that I hadn't already done it because mm-hmm. I knew better. Yeah. And I was shaming my family. You know, I was mm-hmm. embarrassing my family. Like, you know, because you know, I would, I would, yeah, my parents raised me right, man. Like, why, why do you not have this piece of paper to be legit and move on forward in your life? Mm-hmm. Like, what? why? You're not fucking stupid, bro. Like, mm-hmm. why are you not doing this? Yeah. And the reason I never completed, well, at that time, I wasn't completing high school was because the streets were calling me. I was just, it was just too easy to be bad. It yeah. was too easy. My mother had no control. The only control that I, that I really was the law. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was the only control. Like, I didn't do certain things only because I was afraid of getting in trouble. You know, but I didn't do other things only because I knew that just shit wasn't right. You know, like morally, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. ah, I don't know, this is not right. But, mm-hmm. but it was just too much fun. Let's be real. I'm going to be real. It was just fun being out there. <laughs> and, but, but Amma never gave up on me. Mm-hmm. They never closed their doors on me. Yeah. You know, as many times as I rejected them and their policies and procedures, uh-huh. you know. And Called I, them stupid. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. fuck this school. And I left or whatever. Yeah. And like, no, it was, it was stupid. I was stupid. Yeah. Because they never closed their doors on me, dude. Never. Mm-hmm. Never. And every time I would go back, it was, you know, they're like, are you going to finish this time? Are mm-hmm. you finally going to do it? And that encouragement, that, that. Not like, hey, you're gonna be all right. You can. No, it was like, it wasn't that type of shit. Yeah. Like, it wasn't petting me. It was yeah, more like, it was more like an ass kicking. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. You're fucking doing stupid shit. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, like the fuck out of God. They're like, you're gonna be fucking 21. Yeah, they're like, dude, you're like, that's what exactly. That's when, yeah. when Mr. Bean told yeah. you, hey, man, you're fixing to be 21. Yeah. That's pretty much what happened to me. Uh-huh. I had gotten a phone call, and I, 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 I would lie to you if I told you who it was. Mm-hmm. But some administration person called me from Ama. It was a woman. Mm-hmm. And and forgive me if you're watching this and, mm. and you know who you are and I don't. But I played with that in my head that entire summer of 9-7. I was like, yeah, man, you got to go back to school. And so in 97, fall of 97, I didn't go back on registration day. I went back like a month after. And they're like, we're not taking any more students. And I begged them. Mm. I begged him, mm-hmm. and it was, I think it was Mr. Bean who came mm-hmm. out and talked to me, mm-hmm. and he's like, this is no bullshit. This is, it's now or never. Like, you have to do this. And he kind of got on my ass, because he, he, he was already, like, working in the office. He wasn't a... He was a principal. He was, well, I don't know if he was a principal, but he, he was teaching, but he was, also, or something like that. he was also doing something in the yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was the one who came in, I, he like, like, Terzo, like, I like you, man, but, you know, we're not fucking around. And he didn't cuss. I'm, I'm kind of animating the, I'm being animated with mm-hmm. the with my uh, delivery. Words, yeah. But he, he got on my ass like, mm-hmm. yeah, you you one fuck up and you're this is it, you 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 can't do this, and it was this nurse. I'm gonna need you to come in like to a couple of inches into my frame. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, you're good. Sorry. <laughs> so um, there was this nurse that used to be there. Rest in peace, Darlene. Yeah. She caught me on the way out in the hallway. Mm-hmm. She's like, Terzo, it's now or never. Mm-hmm. You got to finish this shit. If you're going to come back, man, mm-hmm. you can do it. You can do it. I was like, how do you know I was coming back? Was, what else would you be doing here? Visiting? Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, I could be visiting. <laughs> Why? Mm-hmm. School's already started. Why would you be visiting? Like, like we're on top of your bullshit. Yeah. You know, like, they couldn't, they, they wouldn't let me get away with bullshit. Yeah. And it was simple. Just come, show up, and go home. Mm-hmm. And, and in my last year, I was the most tempted to do 
to be bad yeah. because a lot of more of my friends from the neighborhood were there. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of other... Uh, that last year that I was there at Alma, mm -hmm. I actually made friends with a lot of dudes that I used to have beef with. Oh, shit. Yeah, a lot of that. But you know what, man? Yeah, it's kind of stupid what we're doing. It is what it is. It is what it is. And, and we never, like, were friends and hung out and go smoke weed together or yeah. nothing. But well, there was no more, like, because when we would pass by each other, I would tell him, man, fuck you, bitch. And he'd tell me, nah, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, okay, whatever, bitch. Like, when we see each other after school. But we never saw each other after school. Uh -huh. I guess we would avoid that confrontation, you yeah. know, because we would probably... So after the drink, y'all just stopped Go talking on. to each other? No, 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 no. It wasn't. Y'all just stopped like saying. We just had to stop other. having beef. Okay. It was a mutual respect there. You okay. know, like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? And that was it. Like, oh. it, it wasn't no more you pass, see, you passing see, by each other and telling each other to fuck you. You see, I don't. I, the, the, when you. Okay, you say that, but people are like, what does that mean? Ooh. The signs of res yes. not respect, but. Yeah. Well, yeah, respect. There's respect. Yeah, respect. I respect I'm like, you. What, how would I say this? It's a sign of respect. Like, yeah, all right. That's what it was between me and this dude. Yeah. And I'm using this dude as as, the, an example. as a as the most vivid example of memory that I have. That you, you remember, know? yeah. You know, only because that and that happened with several other dudes that I had yeah. beef with. Only because they were from different neighborhoods. Yeah. You know? Uh, but with him, it, I remember that more vividly, mm -hmm. only because it was more tension between me and him. You ended up you you graduate, right? I did. You graduate. Thanks. To Jay, Jay gives you a D. D minus. So get the hell out of school. Get out. <laughs> go do something. Yes. What did you go do? I we ain't got to get into detail because a lot of a lot of my rocky <clears throat> my rocky past happens right after that a lot of the things that I'm not proud of happens right after that a lot of my early 20s I'm like I don't know who that girl was I ain't her I'm not trying to be her so we ain't got to go into detail but what I do want to know is do you feel like you fell into yourself while you were at AMA or after actually when I graduated what I did was I took a year to kind of like play around on what my options were. Okay. And I went, I, I tried to join the military. I wanted to get away from everything. Mm -hmm. I joined the, I joined the Navy. So I did that. I went in 1999, the fall of 99. I went into the Navy because I graduated in 98 Yeah. in the summer of 98. And, uh, I, I was just knocking around from job to job. Mm -hmm. And I worked at UPS that summer that I graduated didn't like that shit. Mm -hmm. I went to work at this. Uh, I went to work at an attorney's office only so I could learn the law, so I could learn how to manipulate the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my mindset at that time. Yeah. Stupid and immature. Instead of learning to be a productive citizen, I was like, "How can I? How can I use this? How can I use this to my advantage yeah. to be more fucking mischievous?" <laughs> so uh, I had I had a <clears throat> I had a a cousin of mine who worked at this uh, lawyer's office, and she gave me a job there. And so I was mm -hmm. I was doing that for a little bit. I worked in construction at Baker Concrete and Construction. I, like, I was knocking off jobs here and there. I don't know. I was like, man, okay, you, you graduated now. Like, you're, what are you going to do now, dude? Yeah. And I, I tried to join the Navy, but middle of my boot camp, and uh, like I was already like, you go in as an E1, which is the mm -hmm. lowest level. I was already in E2 because of my voice. I was singing cadence. Like I was one, two, one, two. I had okay. a loud voice and it would carry. Uh. So they made me second in charge of the unit, of the division. They mm -hmm. called them divisions there. So because I would sing the march cadence. Mm -hmm. And my command was one, two, one, two, a three, a four. Uh -huh. A one, two, a three, a four. A three, a four. And one is like left. Uh, two is right and uh -huh. that's how we would march we would march to do everything we would, as soon as we wake up we'd be marching to go eat to go do everything uh -huh. so the the guy the division pushers were like you got a good voice and you know what you're gonna sing cadence and get uh -huh. the back of the line and, and instruct these motherfuckers so i was i love boot camp uh -huh. navy boot camp was the shit for me uh -huh. i was like dude this is awesome like i was yeah. fucking great at it they liked the fact that i was I was a good swimmer, and yeah. they would try to get me to join the BUDS program to do some underwater welding shit. And I was like, dude, I just want to be a cook, do my four years, and go to college. Like, I'm not interested in becoming a SEAL. And oh, you wanted them to pay for college? Yeah, that's really why I went to the Navy. Yeah. I wanted to go to the, because of that. I mm -hmm. wanted to do that shit. I just wanted to do my four years, wanted to do be a cook, Yeah. and just that's it. Like, after that, I'm going home. Yeah. So anyways, I was like, fuck it. I'll do this for four years, and then go to school. Mm -hmm. But when they saw how they loved the way that I was swimming and I was skinny, they're like, why don't you join the BUDS program? I was like, what's that? And they're like, well, that's like a step away from being a Navy SEAL. And, mm -hmm. and they're like training me, like, you should do underwater welding. It's a bigger pay, higher ranking. I was like, oh, okay, I'll look into it. So I'd already gotten my dream pack because I was uh, a rock in the Navy. I had signed up to do my, uh, I wanted to get stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, because I wanted to do the East Pack tour. Mm -hmm. I want to go see Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to go to San Diego mm -hmm. and be stationed out there, but they can go do the, the West Pack tour. Mm -hmm. 
then go see you know Japan and all the okay, all yeah. that shit. But but you, you some you don't get to choose. But mm-hmm. at the end of your boot camp, if you do well enough, you can request where you want to go. Okay. And I my A school was in San Antonio to be a uh, my they given me my A school in San Antonio to become a, a cook in the mess. I was gonna work in the mess, and they were gonna send me off to uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And it was like a week from passing review. We had already done the captain's cup, mm-hmm. and it was like a week before my parents were gonna come up there and see me graduate mm-hmm. and march and everything. And that last week that you're there in boot camp, you don't really do shit in the navy. Mm-hmm. You just wake up and you. It's kind of like le- It's like you know you do leisure activities. Okay. You know you're not. You're, there's not a set schedule. You mm-hmm. have to still do certain things, but it wasn't like a, a regiment that we had to follow like every day. Okay. And this is the last week of school before I got sent to my A school, before my passing review. Mm-hmm. And my division won the Captain's Cup. Like, we were awesome. Uh, we, we went through this thing called Battle Stations. It was, it was this whole day, 24 hours of no sleep, but you had to go through these obstacle courses. Anyways, um, like I said, I love the Navy, and I was there, and I was in diving class. I was in the pool. Mm-hmm. I was on the diving board when the, uh, the chief, of, it was, I think it was the chief. Or a petty, petty chief? Or no, it was a chief. Mm-hmm. He walks in there. He was in his brown suit. I'm looking for Seaman Recruit Ponce. And uh, they were like, he's on the diving board and this, this and that. And they're like, I need you to go to your, uh, I need you to go to your, I don't know if they're called barracks. They weren't called barracks. I need you to go to your ship. They called them ships. But they weren't, they were, they were barracks. Yeah. They just called them. I need you to go to your ship, pack up your shit. You're getting set to seps, the separations. I was like, what? And they're like. And he was just didn't want to tell me. That's all he told me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what the... F-? Like, I, I was confused. So I went and got all my shit, packed up my stuff. Yeah. I was like, what What seps? What separations? Like, I don't know what the fuck that was. I was scared. Yeah. Not knowing what's going on. Like, I'm like a week from graduating. Like, what's going on? So then they, this other dude came and talked to me. And he said... Uh, he said, man, why did you, you know, they put me in this room. Like, why did you lie? Why didn't you just tell us the truth? You couldn't, didn't have to go through this. We have to send you home. It's like, send me home. For what? You didn't you didn't specify this in your application to the Navy. Mm-hmm. I was like, but I'm here, man. Like I'm already like I'm finished boot camp. Like y'all gonna send me home for real? So what they did is they gave me a general discharge, and I had to go mm-hmm. back to my judge and get a waiver from him, saying that I wasn't like a threat or something to society or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And I had again, I, I could have gone back, mm-hmm. and I but I had to restart boot camp all over. Oh. I was like, I am not going back. Yeah, I'm not doing this Once again. I came home, that was it. That was it? That was that? <laughs> that was it. And uh, I lingered around again, uh, bounced around from job to job till I went to work at AMA. You went back to AMA? I went back to AMA and I went You went back there. to that school? I went back to the school. The school that... That took a chance on me. <laughs> that kept taking a chance on and you. And they took a chance on me and they hired me to be a, a tech at Casa Phoenix. I a was tech. there for eight years. Tech, what, what would you do as a tech? I just, uh, okay, so Casa Phoenix. I went to Casa Phoenix also when I was a kid. Oh, go into what Casa ju- Phoenix is. Casa Phoenix is a drug rehabilitation for ju- for juveniles. Mm-hmm. And, Young. Yeah, like, you know, just you know, underage. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you're, <clears throat> and uh, you were sent there in the system. If you were in the system, you were sent there. Mm-hmm. Like, if you, you had to apply to go there. Yeah. So I had gone to Casa Phoenix, too, when I was a kid. Now, but the guy was like, dude, it's a good job. Like, you know, all you're going to do is just write shit in the log and just wake mm-hmm. these kids up and make sure they make go to sure, bed, make, make sure, sure they, they don't go bite. To, yeah, yeah, shit like that. Yeah. It's kind of like the security thing. And again, I'm in my early 20s, Yeah. like 24 or some shit mm-hmm. like that. And I think it was like right after the 9-11 thing. Yeah, it was like October of uh, after the towers came down. Tower, yeah. Yeah, it was in October 2001. And yeah. I had gone to... To, I went back to AMA, mm-hmm. and I tried to get a security position there. Because I, I was thinking about even going to, going to college to become a teacher. Okay. Like, fuck it. I love history. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck, why not teach history? Because you love it. And it's something that you're passionate about, right? And so that's what originally my intention was, to go back to AMA, to become security, then go to school at the same time while I was going to AMA, mm-hmm. to become a history teacher. Well, Cadillac job. You yeah. teach what you love. You love history. Yeah. You get the summers off. Yeah. Get to boss little motherfuckers around. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Cadillac job. That's what I was thinking. Like, uh-huh. dude, why are you gonna fucking sweat your ass? Why are you off? making it hard? Yeah, why are you making this hard, dude? You yeah. can put up with a bunch of little shits. You, you, you were a little shit. You know how to do it. You know how to do this. Yeah. But when I get to Arma, this guy named Chris Joliet or Jolivet or whatever his name was, he's like, Nah, bro, let me put you in this thing called Casa Phoenix. And I was like, I used to go to Casa Phoenix. I don't really want to work there. Mm-hmm. And they hired me, and I was a tech there at Arma for eight years. Yeah. Eight years. Eight years. Well, I. I I did four years and then no, I did six years and then I took a year off because I was straddling the fence and it opened a lot of doors for me, mm-hmm. you know. 
but I was still not doing your best. Yeah. Not doing my best to be a good person. Yeah, citizen. Yeah, yeah, citizen. Yeah, and like I said, your early twenties, you're still trying to find yourself. You're trying to start. You're trying to get where you, where you want to be, where you want to go. That's exactly but, what it was. Yeah. So you worked for one of one of uh, one of Ama's programs for eight years. For eight years. You were there. You did the things that you wanted to do, and then how did you, how do you how are you? That is so far removed from what you do now. Okay. Well, I got my past caught up with me when I was at Ama. Okay. And I had to leave Ama. Okay. Uh, for the things that you did for the when you were young. Younger. Yeah. You know, because I actually working at Casa Phoenix changed, changed me. It did. I, I learned a lot of coping skills there that the kids were being taught. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm not going to get too much into details, but, you know, no, yeah, I, I, I did something really stupid. In your younger years. In my younger years, and it caught up with me. And then also, I did something. There was some with a family member involved. It was really stupid, uh, and uh, so it caught up. I just, I just, uh-huh. yeah, when I finally had decided to just be cool mm-hmm. and leave that shit alone and grow the fuck up, mm-hmm. I ended up doing. I just, I was just did something stupid. Okay, so anyways. So you, you, you ended up growing the fuck up. <laughs> I ended up growing up. Uh-huh. I ended up maturing mentally. Mm-hmm. While I was at Ama, mm-hmm. you know, while I was working, work, working there. Oh, well, you you end up working for Ama. You do you do do the switch, right? And then now here we are, about twenty years later. What do you do now? I'm fortunate enough to run my own small little business. Mm-hmm. Doing. Uh, How did you explain it to my son? Is he because? Explaining it to your son was completely different. No, 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 no. But, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, what did he call it, Edgar? So basically, you work with food trucks. Yeah. yeah. And in in the whole premises, you work with food trucks. And I like the story about how you got into working with food trucks. So, where it started off is I'm gonna introduce it, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna tap it off. You went from Houston, you were in New York, and we had the conversation about New York, how we feel we kind of like belong there, but we are not there, we're here, and we feel like this is our home. You were in New York, you seen some food trucks pull up to a park. Yeah. Take it from there. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I, I've, tr- I've done some traveling all mm-hmm. in the United States, but for some reason, mm-hmm. I'm drawn to that fucking city New York yeah all right I'm really drawn to that city like I function different there yeah like there it's chaotic Mm -hmm. but I'm more in tune there Mm -hmm. you know and I love being fucking lazy and slow the way the culture is here yeah you know we just cool and kick back and Mm -hmm. shit and I love it it's cool you know it's very not as a stressful environment there's a reason we have a drink called lean yeah pretty much yeah (laughs) exactly I'm drawn to New York City I don't know why Mm-hmm. I think maybe in one of my past lives I lived there, or maybe in another New York City, in another dimension, in another world, somewhere is off in another galaxy. My soul was also going in New York and lived in a city like New York City. I don't know. There could be all kinds of possibilities for that attraction, right? Mm-hmm. But there is an attraction there, and and I visited New York many times. Out of all the other cities in the United States, I visited New York City often. Okay. I would just be bored and like, you know what? I'm gonna go. I feel like some fucking New York pizza. So I'd go and take off for 48 hours. Okay. Fuck it. Let's go. I'd pay the plane ticket and just go. Sometimes by myself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I've taken family with me. Sometimes I've taken friends, love interests, you mm-hmm. know. So I just, hey, man, you know what? Let's go see. Let's go do something awesome. Let's go to New York. Because there's always something to do there. And it's bigger than just Manhattan. There's so much more to do outside than just Manhattan. Mm-hmm. But when, of course, you're a tourist and the first time you go there, you're so overwhelmed by everything that's going on in Manhattan. Everything. Yeah. But then once you get tapped into, there's a bigger and more interesting world outside of Manhattan. Mm-hmm. It never stops. The wanting to see more and learn more and just mm-hmm. the way the people function there. Yeah. And it's beautiful and ugly at the same time. Okay. It's a balance of that there. It's gritty and dark and ugly and nasty and beautiful and electric and bliss all at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, it just depends on how you function there and how you experience it, right? Uh, I, I was managing this, this club, uh, the Meridian. Mm-hmm. And I was like, again, I'm late twenties, early thirties. I'm kind of tired of that fucking shit, that scene, club scene, concerts. But I was raising that because of who my father was. You know, mm-hmm. he was a big promoter, and he was a 
you know, he's a pillar in the Latin community and Latin entertainment. Yeah. Gaston Ponce, he's like, you know, composed songs for artists and he owned Latin nightclubs and mm -hmm. he was a disc jockey on radio, you know. Yeah, this is who your father was. This is my father was. So I grew up in that, you know. That industry. That industry, you know, with the... Uh, um, Concerts and artists and you know festivals and parties and shit like that. Yeah. So I, you know, artists. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I was. So you knew the music. You knew you knew the movement of things I because knew, of him. Yeah, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. what I was doing at the Meridian. Yeah. And uh, I did my light just turned. I, I don't know. What, I don't know what I, I guess what uh, I had a. Uh, I guess what they call an epiphany. I had a thought, an idea. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's like, you know what, dude? Why don't we just turn this fucking place into a food park? Uh -huh. So I reached out to the owner of the building, who's a good friend of mine. I'm not going to say his name because a lot of people were, just didn't like the guy because he has uh, very, very East Coast business practices. Let me just say it like that. Okay. Okay? He didn't want to invest into the cosmetics of the place. And uh -huh. the place was kind of not looking that desirable to go throw a party there or mm -hmm. club i've been at the meridian You've been for a concert yeah okay so you, it, yeah. it's 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 you know you, you, if you turn on the lights it, you can find the flaws <laughs> and he didn't want to invest in no cosmetics and i just was tired of that scene the club and the the, mm -hmm. the concert shit and i just wanted to create something different so i was fortunate enough to hook up with this dude named gonzo mm -hmm. I was like street artist. Yeah, yeah, street artist from Houston. Yeah, fantastic. Probably the well, the best the known, best here known in here in Houston. Yeah. He sure is. I was like, dude, he came at me with this idea. We kind of exchanged ideas back and forth about, you know, painting the the bringing a visual artistic sense to this ugly part of downtown, mm -hmm. or you know, part of they call it Edo now, but it's second. It used word. to be. Uh, it used to be, it used to be the old Chinatown. Chinatown. Yeah, it's Chinatown. The old Chinatown. That's yeah, right. Sure that's was. right. That's right. Uh, Seafood Charlie. I think that was the the Meridian used to be Seafood really? Charlie's place. I don't know. We went to some other buffet down the street, a cheaper way. No, the Seafood Charlie was a a, a wholesale in seafoods. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, I was, that, like, that, was that, that That's that building where the. Meridian the only reason was. I know is because my family would go down there for like me and my stepdad and my mom, and after church we would go to like a buffet down there, and it was. Chinatown, like they mm -hmm. had the stores and they was catered to to the Asian population. Yeah, it was the original. It was the original Chinatown. Yeah, which is a section of Second Ward. Yeah, it was, it was a section of Second Ward, which happens to be east of downtown. So that's why they call it East Downtown. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's why uh, hipsters and let's not let's not, let's not go because there. we we have i got beef yeah, with that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. I don't care. I can call it Edo, but it's Second Ward in my heart. It know? is, but it's you know I understand the the change. The they want to evolve, attract more people to buy properties there i understand what you're doing <laughs> i know what it's called we're not gonna get into that shit yeah so anyways um yeah uh it's like let's just paint the place we got with red bull and did this thing called urban rhythm mm -hmm. and uh that's what really got it the notification but before that mm -hmm. i had opened up the first food park there yeah. and really i got the idea from i had went to new york city and in the Red Hook District, I, went, I had a friend from my boot camp in the Navy. His name is Dukas. Mm -hmm. He lives in Connecticut now, but he's from the Bronx. And every time I'd go to New York, we would try to, like, hook up, you know, mm -hmm. like, hey, what's up? I'm in town. All right, man, I'm going to go. We'll go see you, man. We'll go party and shit like that. And one time that I went to New York City, he took me to this place in the Red Hook District, which is in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And he took me to this. It was a park. Mm -hmm. And the Latin fellas out there playing soccer. Okay. Like, you know, like they do here in Houston. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing but Spanish people out there, you know, yeah. they're drinking and having a good old time. Having a good old time. They got their music yeah. and shit. So, yeah. but since it's, everything's built at a closer range there, it's like, clo it, like in it, New York, it's yeah. more intimate. Yeah. So it, it was, it felt more like a party. Yeah. It, you know? They don't got the space that we got out here. They're, they were out there in the streets, drinking yeah. it up, smoking <laughs> weed, people fucking mm -hmm. just having a good old time. Mind you, this is like around 10 in the morning. Mm hmm. And I'm like, dude, you took me to soccer games? Like, what we're going to do is watch. He's like, just wait, dude. Give it a couple hours. Watch what happens. Well, within those couple of hours, food trucks and food stands started popping up mm -hmm. on this street. Mm -hmm. I would lie to you if I told you exactly what street it was. I know it was in the Red Hook District and which park it was. Mm -hmm. I don't. I can't tell you the name of the park. I don't. I don't even know exactly what the street was, but I know Red Hook District, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right? And by by one o'clock in the afternoon. It was that entire street was filled. One little section of the, right that was adjacent to the park mm -hmm. that run that ran along the park side. They closed it off. Like I don't know if they had <clears throat> permission from the city to do this shit they or not. They just did it. 
Yeah, and it sounds like a bunch of Hispanic. It, <laughs> they, it, that's it, what you do it. it. And there were there were Latin fellas and Latin people from everywhere, you know, from it wasn't just Mexico. Mm-hmm. You know, there I seen the Puerto Rican flag, I yeah. seen the Cuban flag. There were some of Salvadorians and Hondurans out there, Dominicans. Mm-hmm. You know, there was there was every Latin culture out there that I could think of, right? You know, that would come in my head. Except for like, you know, I didn't see no Argentinian shit, but I saw, you know, the what were what I guess the people from that neighborhood, mm-hmm. you know, the Latin people from that neighborhood and the the diversity of it and the different showed Latin cultures. Yeah. They just showed up. Mm-hmm. And they're all excuse me, they're all buying food from these different stands. Mm-hmm. Now, each stand had different food. Uh there was um one stand was selling mariscos, you know, seafood. Uh, straight like they would put the fucking seafood in the cup and put salsa here you go here you go yeah that was it you drenched it with lemon boom andale there you go in the street <laughs> like what like a, a seafood cocktail mexican seafood cocktail mm-hmm. they they literally had it in okay so they had the seafood chilled in an ice uh-huh. that was in a big old cooler oh okay okay yeah and so the dude just opened up the bag Grab the scoop, put the <laughs> seafood in the cup, Vámonos. put the the <laughs> tomato Sometimes, liquid yeah, in it, yeah. and andale, there you go. Yeah. This other stand was selling pupusas. This other stand was selling these calabaza flowers that mm-hmm. people were just sucking the, the flower, the calabaza right out of the flower. It was shit that I've never seen before. People were eating street food from their country, street food, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, this is fucking cool, man. This is amazing. Like mm-hmm. with a matter of a couple hours. Mm-hmm. There was over 20 vendors there, mm-hmm. and food trucks and food vendors stands. Oh, okay. But what I noticed was none of them were selling drinks. Mm-hmm. You had to buy your drinks at these little stands that were separated from the people that were selling the that food. Was, that were set up differently. Well, come to find out that the people that were running that little party, that little festival thing, were the people that were selling the beverages. So they were like, you know, we. I got to kind of like talk to mm-hmm. people, and they're like, well, what we do is... You know, we charge the vendor to be here to sell their food, but they can't sell no drinks. Mm-hmm. Like, that's an awesome idea. Mm-hmm. Man, that's great. No wonder. And they're making good money. Mm-hmm. You know, because they're selling tons of water and agua Cokes frescas and, yeah. and Cokes yeah. and shit and drinks from Latin America that I've never heard of. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, this is fucking awesome. This is some cool shit. I was like, only if we could have a beer. Only if I could have a beer. That was the only thing that was pretty much missing. Like, okay. some kind of alcohol factor, you uh-huh. know? I would have been great to just enjoy a beer with some of the food that I was If it eating. was offered, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I figured, you know, maybe because this is an illegal thing that's going on. They weren't, oh, selling, they weren't they, selling alcohol. They were really going to get in trouble with alcohol, yeah. But again, I don't know if it was official or if it was illegal what they were doing. Okay. But the, the concept, the idea was just fucking awesome. Yeah. And so, I, that's all I did. I had took exactly that idea mm-hmm. and I put it. And opened up the you, you brought the concept. Yeah, that's it. That was it. You I, I literally concept. stole that shit from my many travels to New York. Not City. stole it. You were influenced by it. There you go. That's a nice way of saying. No, stolen. because <laughs> sometimes we do get it because the 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 Meridian isn't like on a street. Like it has a big parking lot. And if we pulled up like some food trucks on a street, like it permits and the city and all kinds of other stuff. But when you're giving the space, like the Meridian had its parking lot. That's a whole other like thing. Hey, this is Angelica. Welcome to the Juana Words Podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, YouTube, JuanaWords.com. If you listen to an episode and you like what you hear, leave us a review or maybe a comment or two. We hope you enjoy this episode. And I do understand because, again, we've tried to get permits to do like simple things and it's completely difficult. Like there is a lot of red tape to do a lot of the things. But you've managed, even though as difficult as it was, you managed to bring the concept here to Houston. And it's made it easier for other people that followed suit behind you to do other things in, in a different fashion and a different form. Yeah, it, it, other people are doing the exact thing that I started doing. So you wanted to bring people to a place and you didn't want it to be ugly, which is why you brought in Gonzo, the street artist, to actually make the building look presentable where people wanted to come. And now people go there to take the pictures. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I drive, I know, I drive I by there and I'm like, yeah, that's me. You know, I did that. It's cool feeling. I don't like want like a statue in my name or no, nothing no, like no. that. You yeah, know what no, I mean? Yeah. But it feels good that I did something positive, yeah. you know? Well, street art really did. I mean, a lot of the street art, like it was like little walls here and there, but it's never a fixture the way it is there. 
No, it's not. No. It, that like you walk a couple of steps and it's another artist with yeah. another concert. Like you can, it's literally like a gallery outside. Yeah, and that was kind of like the that was kind of like the idea. And I wasn't alone on this. There was mm -hmm. this other guy named Jack that I was working with, mm -hmm. and this other guy named uh, he was my he was a, a, a good good friend of mine, Mike, mm -hmm. uh, that I worked Miguel. We we pretty much all came up with how to do this. I injected the idea. Mm -hmm. The look and the feel. Yeah, like, hey, man, this is what I saw in New York. And Jack helped me create it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, unfortunately, he had a falling out with the owner and things mm -hmm. didn't work out. He didn't stay but for like a week after the food park was open. Mm -hmm. Then he left. But I can't take full credit without acknowledging him and Miguel. Mm -hmm. Miguel stuck with me through it as much as he could. And he works at Ama too. Oh really? And Miguel, he's a he's a he's a security <laughs> at Ama. Crazy how Ama's yeah know, it revolves some, around a lot of some, people. Some, yeah, around a lot of people in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And so Miguel and I stuck it out for as much as we could, but we just can't compete with other people wanting to buy million dollar properties. You know. Yeah. So that's really why. And then at the same time, I didn't have money to invest in that type of a project. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I just, you know, because I have the ideas. And I was also kind of like shady to share my ideas with other people because I know people just steal your ideas and they'll run and do it themselves. Mm -hmm. When they got the money. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and there have been other attempts to do the things that I've done. Mm -hmm. But it, there's got to be, my father used to say, there's one thing getting the people to come. It's another thing to get people to stay. Mm -hmm. And it's something completely different to get them to come back. And oh. you have to have all that, you know oh. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But just remember, if you control the drink, son, you control the party. The whole everything that we do in in this life is is revolved is revolving around drinks. Even if you're selling water, son. Are you taking notes? He said, even if you're, <laughs> <laughs> he said, even if you're selling water, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. sell beverages. You so can, it's one sell thing, beverages. You control the you control the party. It's one thing to get people to show up. It's another thing. It's another thing to get people to sh stay. Yeah. And it's another thing to get people to show up back again. It's a one. It's one thing to get people to show. I'll never forget when he told me that. Uh -huh. Because out of the many things that he taught, my dad didn't teach me how to work on cars, but he sure did teach me the hustle of the entertainment. The business. mindset, yeah. Yeah. So he's one of the times that he told me it's it's one thing to get people to come to your to your event. Mm -hmm. It's another thing completely different to get people to stay at your event, and then it's completely different to get people to come back. Once you master. Those three things, mm -hmm. and they run like, and they, they, you know, it flows. Yeah. Watch what happens, but make sure you control the beverages. You control the beverages. You control the event. No matter how bad the act is, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. You making your money because you're selling beverages. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it rained on your event. Mm -hmm. You still made money. So control the beverages, and you control the event. And that I've taken that concept ever since I was a kid. Remember when I was in high school? Who were you all did. the parties? Yeah. Who were all the Who were all the parties at? Who sold all the tacos? It was. Ah! <laughs> Shh. <laughs> how that that whole thing comes back around because you're like you you like start somehow with food and excuse me you end up in food yeah well i've always had a passion for food mm -hmm. right? i always like eating then when i was a you kid. mentioned it a couple of times because you were talking about the mess home becoming a cook mm -hmm. when you were yeah yeah that's, I, I i i like food yeah and i was like you know I, when i was a kid i was like you know i'm gonna own a restaurant and sell different foods from different parts of the mm -hmm. world you know, I think, and I love trying out different food. My father, again, mm -hmm. my dad, you know, he, he, I remember him, like, the first time I ate oysters with him. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. I'm like, Dad, I'm not going to like it. It looks like boogers. Like, <laughs> you're going you gonna to try it. I was like, but Dad, it's got a funny smell. Like, I don't know. And he was like, mm -hmm. well, you're not going to be able to order anything else until you try it. Mm -hmm. you, you try this shit. And, I don't know, and so I tried it. I was like, you know, it's not that bad. I yeah. like it. And yeah. so like, okay, now what else do you want? You know, he was like he was like that. Uh, he would force he me to try other shit. Oh well, my bad. I was gonna say he encouraged you, and you're like, no, he forced me. Yeah, he. My <laughs> father was when it, he was a fool. My father was a damn fool when it came to food, you know. And yeah, mm -hmm. he he pretty much he did not because kids will be like, no, that looks gross. They don't want to try it, and then they'll, and later on they'll probably. But my father's like, but well, at least you'll know, you won't be afraid to try this again as you get older. Yeah. So try it. Yeah. Or you're not gonna be able to eat anything else. Mm -hmm. My father was a good man, mm -hmm. but he had his. Mannerism. He had his faults about certain things, yeah. and that's one thing he was a little asshole about. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I'm not gonna get you anything else until you try this. <laughs> but which is good because mm -hmm. it it opened up my, you know, your palate. Yeah, it, it sure yeah. did. He yeah. he did that. My mm -hmm. father did that. He opened up my palate, and I and he did that as I, as I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I started getting more involved into food and loving food and mm -hmm. different types of food. I, had, I one time I was dating this Jewish Puerto Rican chick, who introduced me on how to get my. You know, I was like 18, and she was like 20. 
mm-hmm. she's older than me i was just head over heels over this girl mm-hmm. and i still can't find her on facebook i don't know oh where my she's God, at why are you talking to that poor girl <laughs> she's like because i ain't trying to find her. I, th- I think she moved to like uh i think she moved to new york as a matter of fact mm. but she was this puerto rican jewish chick that i used to date and i used to like i was 18 and i didn't mm-hmm. know how to order my steak and she was like why do you order your steak like that Mind you, she was older than me, so mm-hmm. and she knew a lot more things than yeah. me, but she schooled me. She's pretty cultured. She was very cultured. Mm-hmm. She's like, let me let me order for you. And if oh. you don't like it, you don't have to eat it, but at least try it. So she introduced things. She introduced me to medium rare steak. I'll never forget her. I'm not mm-hmm. going to say her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, uh, that had a big influence in me. I was like, mm-hmm. whoa. Mm-hmm. Once I tried medium rare steak... Cause I, you know, of course, like, oh no, the blood and you, all that other shit. Like, I'm not gonna eat that. It looks gross, and you know, brainwashed. Mm-hmm. I'm total brainwashed. I was programmed wrong as a yeah. kid about that type. And my father would always tell me that shit too. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, it's one of those things that I just like, no, dad, I'm not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. I started as I started getting older, I started bucking more. Mm-hmm. It's like, nope, nope, not gonna do that shit. But anyways, um, yeah, it was, it was. She was the one who introduced me to medium rare steak, and that was it. I never looked back. Yeah. And so I, that's when, in my early 20s, I really started getting into the food thing and started, mm-hmm. like, exploring different foods. Enjoying your food. Yeah, enjoying it. Yeah. Learning, you know, how to properly pair flavors with stuff. and how, Oh, with, like, alcohol? Like, wine? With and alcohol. Like and, and not just with alcohol. Just recently, with, I've been t- I, we, we were talking about wine and how I, like, how to pair wine with certain foods. And how to, because I'm not really, like, a big wine drinker. I don't mind drinking alcohol while I'm eating. Okay. And so I'm, now I'm learning how to eat with alcohol. How to enjoy it. Like, food tastes different. It, it, and I didn't know that when I was a kid, you know, when you're younger. Yeah, nobody, but now that your palate you. is more mature at this yeah. age, you can, and the wine enhances certain flavors mm-hmm. when I eat, like, certain steaks. Yeah. And uh, and I had to learn. It's not just any wine. You, mm-hmm. you, you're not going to. Yeah. You know, it, does, it doesn't pair too well with white wine. Yeah. Again, each... To each his own, there's real no proper method, mm-hmm. but there are certain things that favor the palate better than others. Even like when I you when you get certain like sauces on pasta, it still pairs differently with certain wines or certain like rose wines or certain white wines. Like it just it's different. It, the way it just it gives you a different taste and you enjoy the food differently. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so I understand that now. Yeah, I guess it is mature. It's a it's a mature palate. But I understand that now, and yeah, but like the whole conversation, you're right. A lot of the conversation <coughs> does happen around food and drink. Yeah, and many things, uh, mm-hmm. peace, peace dealings, mm-hmm. you know, business. Yeah. Social there's always gathering. all. Yeah, that's right. There's, there's always, always there's always drink. A drink. Always, people are always going to drink. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, whether it be alcoholic or not. That's right, because in some Asian cultures, it's like tea, and then other places, it's like tequila, or it's like a certain wine, or it's a certain thing. But yeah, oh my god. Yeah. We need to have more conversations about that. Alcohol. Mm-hmm. Alcohol beverages. Alcohol Drinks beverages. Eating, I know entertainment. I, I'm not a big lifestyle. alcohol drinker. Yeah. But I do enjoy like a couple of beers at a ball game with a hot dog. Mm-hmm. Like I understand why now that mm-hmm. those things pair well. Because it does. Oh, and yeah, it also fits and, the environment. Mm-hmm. You know, you're mm-hmm. you're kind of relaxing. Mm-hmm. And you're watching a baseball game, you know, that I enjoy going to see because I don't like really watching it on TV that much. Mm-hmm. But going to see it is a completely different experience. Oh. And I love my I nachos like and a beer and a hot yeah. dog and my peanuts. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't understand that when I was younger. But now that I'm older, I understand how those combination of flavors uh, complement each other. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when like when I get with friends, like there is certain drinks that we enjoy that we prefer as a group, as opposed to like if I hang out with like one friend and we'll have like a glass of wine. It's a different setting, like it's a different feel, like and so. But now we're talking about something completely different. But so to like to like wrap that up because I can keep talking. Good God, I can keep talking. Um, and I've what done, do you, I've done what most you, of the talking, so no, no, no. I'm, this I've is, never done a podcast before. This was the whole point. The whole point was to introduce <laughs> you because Jay Sharon brought you up, and I wanted to introduce you again to give you the the say in the platform because he was he like boasted about you, and I was like, you know what, Deepso has done a lot of things. Let me go talk to him. So here I am. But so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up, but I want to give you the opportunity to talk about whatever you want for the next five ten minutes. Uh I don't. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I we live once. Try uh-huh. to enjoy it as much as you can. 
life is not a journey. It's uh, it's a musical. We should all be singing and dancing. I mean, that's my interpretation on things. It's not going anywhere. This universe is not going anywhere, right? Uh-huh. So there's no A to B destination. This experience that we have in life, man, we should just enjoy it as much as we can. Mm-hmm. It's about love. It's about forgiveness, which I am having a hard time dealing with, but I am trying. Jesus help him. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, uh, live life, travel, eat food. If you're lucky enough to find somebody that loves you and you love them, enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Not most people will never experience that. Uh, be excellent to each other, as Bill and Ted would say. Who the hell's Bill and Ted? What? Who's Bill and Ted? Cut what? Yeah, yeah, we should cut this, right? Cut, no, no, wait, cut. what? What did I say? Who's Bill and Ted? Bill and Ted's. Who? You don't know who Bill and Ted are? I swear to Bob, I don't know who Bill do and Ted. Who I Co- know who Bob is. Do you know who Cobra? Do you know about Cobra Kai? Man, I swear to God, I don't know if y'all are talking Japanese to me. If this is English, who's Bill and Ted, and what's Cobra Kai? It's some '80s movies. Okay, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh. They would say that be excellent right. to each other. So that's what. Yeah, be excellent to each other. <laughs> Oh, y'all are out. <laughs> that's. I mean, there's, I'm not a uh-huh. preacher or a priest, or uh-huh. I don't know how to say motivational things. Like no, this. no, d- definitely not. I mean, but I was just I wanted to give you the platform to sit there and say because we we touched on a lot of the things that you did, and um, that's definitely not where I want to le- like leave it off. Like that's the, who you're like a like not that you're a bad person, but like you're you're full of energy and you're full of a lot of like history and the, your past you. and the things that all that stuff that that shaped you into the person that you are today every right? human yeah. being in the world should watch that every should watch what every human being should watch what cobra kai uh-huh you want to talk about a tap into the nostalgia senses cobra kai i love it it's cheesy but it's beautifully what, what is the other movie that you told me to watch that i need to watch that would that when we were we're talking over the phone Some, something something adventure bill and ted's that's excellent, excellent no 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 adventure. no no the other one where it's like a couple it's like a guy and a girl and she succeeds being a writer and he like <gasps> oh that's a funny movie called funny farm funny farm yeah you should watch that Cobra it's, another, funny it's, farm. it's another 80s movie yeah, yeah. Funny yeah. Farm and Cobra Kai. but i was saying so like i was saying that i i feel like you've come like a complete like not 180 not 360 like i feel like you're you're yourself but you're not yourself you know what i mean like you're the better version of yourself i'm trying you know what i'm saying like i still got I, a lot of faults no no definitely but i i think that you're there you know what i'm saying we always think that we can be better and then you forget that you're there. I know who I am now. Yeah. If that's what you mean. Yeah. I know who I am. I'm. I know how to be real to myself now. If, if, I don't know if I can explain it. it right. Me, it, me is it's honest. I know how to be honest with myself. I know how to be honest with myself. Yeah, man. Because I was so full of shit all mm-hmm. my my entire life. I was a big bullshit artist, mm-hmm. and I, I was the master of lies. Mm-hmm. I conned everybody because I was so afraid of being exposed for what i really was and what i was really doing or who you thought you were or who i thought i was exactly mm-hmm. and just mostly because of the things that i was doing yeah but if i can honestly say anything i and i'm still getting to know me mm-hmm. you yeah. know i'm still getting to know me that'll never stop yeah until the day that i die i'm yeah. never gonna be complete. i surprise myself sometimes i'd be like who the fuck was that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but i get i'm i guess i can say i'm i know what i am mm-hmm. as far as what i want i guess mm-hmm. i still don't know what i want no no I, it's it's hard to put in words i am content mm-hmm. with and i've forgiven myself for the things that i've done mm-hmm. and i'm content with this and i'm just trying to be better okay you know what i mean yeah. I'd be a better person yeah not just to the world around me because mm-hmm. i'm very selfish yeah but to myself yeah you know I, i'm i'm i don't want to be uh I don't want to be living a lie mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's. I don't know how else to put it. No, that's perfect. You know, so that's perfect. Uh, uh, if I could just reiterate, love each other, man. I, I, then if you get a chance to experience what love is, man, take advantage because most in this world will not. Yeah, and uh, this is an experience. It's not a journey. Life is a musical. We should all be singing and dancing. 
Hard shit on that note. <laughs> well, that's it. That that wraps up the interview because, like I said, I'm here. For, like we can talk forever and ever. Yeah, I feel like, like we can were, talk to, we were talking. We we're talking about wine. It's like, like at the end because again we can do that. But I am. I want to keep having conversations with you, Tir. So hopefully this is the beginning of many. And and who knows? Who knows what might happen? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I hope you enjoy that podcast. Uh, let me know what you think. If you can relate, uh, if you, Bill and Ted, you know who they are. Let me know. <laughs> Be excellent to each other. <laughs> let me know. Let me know. You know that I know that you know, or something like that. All right. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. You want to say bye, Tirso? Later. <laughs>